Hi everybody, welcome to my video today you guys and welcome to Memory Keeping Friday. Today I have a simply layered page that I wanna share with you. I am using the woven thread designer paper. Let me pull this one little pack out here. I have a couple of these left over from my paper share. This paper is really pretty. It is blues and pinks and purples. Um, it has the purple posy new color. It has the peacock, pretty peacock color that I love. Some of these patterns I love, like this one I really love. And then some of them I really don't care for. So um, what's nice, I always love when I can get a designer paper where if one side I don't like, the other side I you know like or I feel like I can use. And that's the case with this paper. So so I thought it would be great to do a simply layered page. So what we're going to do is a two sided scrapbook page and I'm going to show you how to put it together. I have a bunch of pieces cut out and I've used my stitched nestled dies, which are these, which are fabulous. I have two full sets of them. I love them so much and um, having two sets for me makes it easy to mass produce stuff. And then the other item I pulled out of my stash was my butterfly thinlets and it has these three butterflies. It's retired, but you probably have it in your stash. If not, you could use the butterfly punch. I might pull this out and use it as well. So let's go ahead and get started and let me show you what we're going to do. I'm going to give you all of the measurements for everything that we do today, but I don't have a PDF for you. I just haven't had time to add anything extra to my plate. Um, I'm just doing good keeping up with normal stuff this summer. So we're starting out a 12 by 12 piece of designer paper. Now you could start out with just the pretty peacock 12 by 12 cardstock if you wanted. I really loved this design and I'm not all that crazy about this side so I actually don't mind using my 12 by 12 designer paper as my background piece but if you wanted to save your designer paper um, you could use cardstock for this Stampin' Up sells a pack of 12 by 12 cardstock in the end colors um, and I picked that up but I figured this was a great um, background piece so this is 12 by 12 and then this piece is going to be eight by eight. And eventually it's gonna be somewhere in the middle. But I have some other pieces that we need to put on here first so that we can get everything lined up. So I have, this is again designer paper. I'm using a lot of this designer paper because while a lot of the pieces have these really cool designs, when you flip them over, they have very basic um, kind of designs. Like this just looks like textured paper. It's not really too, um, a lot of a design. So this is in the terracotta tile color. And the uh, we're gonna put these here eventually. And then we're going to put these pieces here, probably going to do them a little bit down. And I'm going to give you all the measurements for this in case you want to cre recreate it. I just want to show you what my basic layout is going to look like. Then I have some of this um, ribbon here, and I love this ribbon. This is the in color ribbon, and I have some in the pretty peacock, which is my favorite color of the in colors. But you can get this in all of our new in colors, so you can get it in the terracotta tile, the pretty um, purple posy, um, any of those colors. Um, you're gonna be able to use that. So we're gonna have that here. And this is going to be the basic of what our layout is going to start with. And then what I've done is I have cut um, with my nestle dies some of this design. I feel like this is a very 90s kind of vibe too. And we're going to put this probably up here, maybe tuck it underneath. I'm not quite sure. So this piece here is 8 by 8. This piece here is two inches by four inches. So you have two pieces that are two inches by four inches. And this piece is two inches by two and a half. So you'll just have two of those, okay? So what we're gonna do is we are going to layer these two pieces first, and then that is gonna help us layer everything else kind of going this way. So instead of trying to 
put this in the middle and get it straight and make sure that everything's lined up. We'll just start with these pieces over here. So we'll just take some snail and you could do the opposite of what I'm doing instead of having the terracotta tile color up here and these pieces on the bottom. You could switch them if you wanted. So I'm just going to use my grid mat to line these up sort of where I want them and then we'll layer this piece right below it. So now we can go ahead and layer this piece and then we can layer these pieces. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and layer these here and then center this. That way if I've not cut perfectly or I feel like maybe I might have gotten this side off a little bit. Oh no, I lined it up pretty good. I feel like I didn't cut that exactly perfect. So what I can do is use my grid mat. Just line this up like this. And then I have this really large ruler. I got it years and years ago and it has come in handy. So I'll lay this across here and then we'll layer, we'll know which square to use over here and we'll just layer this down. So I know that I'm going to need to start it with the top of this. So now that I have my pieces here, what I can now do is put this right in the middle and I'm going to sort of center it. Okay, so let me share with you a little tip that um, may help you when you're doing this. So what I had done is I had calculated maybe what my strips should be to fit perfectly across my 12 by 12 piece of Car, uh, designer paper. So instead of just doing a full strip and losing paper behind my piece here, what I decided to do was cut it down and then I thought, oh, everything will line up really well. So this was two, uh, what is it, two inches across? Is that what I said earlier? Yeah, so these each are two inches across and then this piece is eight inches. So in theory, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, it would all fit. But all 12 by 12 paper can be off a little bit. It cannot be perfect. It cannot be like, it could be like 12 and an eighth or 12 and a 16th or whatever it is. So what I noticed is when I started to line this up, I had quite a few gaps. Like I had quite a large gap here and here, like probably less than probably a 16th of it, but I could still see it and it bothered me. So that is why normally I'll just put a full strip across when I'm doing layers like this, because I just feel like it leaves less room for things to kind of be off a little bit. So in order to fix it, what I've done is I thought instead of being frustrated with the situation, I just added a eighth uh, or a quarter of an inch to my layers. So right here I have the designer paper and then I grabbed some Seaside Spray cardstock and I did eight and a quarter by eight and a quarter and I layered this. So now what I'm going to do is just layer it on here like so and it's going to cover up any of that gap that I feel like was created and the other thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to add foam to the back of this to pop this piece up. So the best way to do that is to just add some fun foam especially because your fun foam can be larger and it can cover a larger area and then I'm just going to add quite a bit of adhesive here. And then we'll add this piece and it'll overlap these two layers a tiny bit and then let me just make sure that this is straight I'm so picky when it comes to lining things up it doesn't have to be perfect but I just tend to go a little overboard wanting it to be perfect so a couple things that this is gonna help first when I add this layer here it's gonna slide underneath my popped up piece a little bit better and then it's gonna give another layer of color so next I can add my ribbon here and again I'm gonna be able to just lift that up and slide it right underneath this layer so I'm just gonna add adhesive snail adhesive right to the back of this ribbon and it's going to be perfect and then I'll slide it under there a little bit and then we'll trim it 
You could use tear tape for this if you felt like you were nervous that maybe your ribbon was going to come off. Um, I find that snail adhesive holds ribbon pretty well, so I'm not nervous. So then let's layer this right under here. And then we'll trim those pieces off in just one second. So now you can get a look at how it's going to look here. Or you could fold these behind and um, tape them. Whatever you felt um, was best. Okay, so here's the basic of what's going to happen. So now what I want to do is add some photo mats and some layers. And then I want to add my butterflies. So I already had decided to use this piece up here. I could use it right here or I could tuck it underneath. I actually think maybe I want to layer it like this so that I can add, it just pulls this color up here. I'm going to put a butterfly here and then I have some photo mats. So my photo mats are really simple. I have a four by four. And then I have three by four. And then I have three by three. So you can see this is going to line up really nice. And you can either leave the blocks or you can add photos. So here I would add a photo that was three and three quarters by three and three quarters. Here I would do one that was slightly less than three by four, or you could remove the whole block and add a three by four photo. So you can do either, either way um, works well. So then you just center these in the middle. What I'll do here is this will be a journaling block and then I like to have color um, underneath my photos. So I will trim my photos and um, do them that way. So just start with one and then line these other ones up. This will be a journaling block and I can type out my journaling on, you know, probably I'll do it on my computer and do whisper white cardstock and then trim it down. like that and then we'll go ahead and turn this over and we will just tape the ribbon back behind the layout that's going to give the ribbon a nice finish on the edges and then we'll do our second page which will look just like the first page um, and we'll put we'll bring them together okay so to line all of this up what I'm going to do is just set my first layout right next to my second layout here. And I'm gonna go ahead and use my grid mat again. So these measurements are exactly the same. We have two inches here, and then the same paper here, another two inches down here. So this will be actually easier because we have a little bit more of a guide to go by because we put one side together already. that's gonna go here and then I have my ribbon that will be exactly the same as on the other side 
and then I have my my mats and I'm gonna do this a little bit opposite so on this side um, let's see if you can see both of these layouts kind of together so on this side my square is here my larger square so I'm gonna put my larger square up in the corner and then my smaller one here and then this one is going to go here and my last one is gonna go here. And this way, my eye, when I look at, or when anybody looks at this layout, it's gonna draw your eye into the middle instead of forcing it to the outside because everything's not exactly the same. It would look a little weird if this was just exactly the same. So always try to, um, make your second side slightly different. You could also do it this way. So that your pieces were right next to each other. And your butterflies are coming in. That might be a better way to do it. It also depends on how you like things the way you like them. Um, you may not like a design a certain way and if you feel that way then switch it up change it up like if you're doing this layout and you feel like the photo mats maybe look a little bit weird or you like them in a different orientation then you should go with what you feel like looks good to you so we'll go ahead and add our ribbon on here I like covering up seams I don't really like seeing the seams of things so that's nice oh there goes all my photo mats I forgot they were like that okay so let's glue these down with some tape and then we'll put our photo mats on and we will okay so I put in my second layers and a couple things I want to share with you guys I feel like these layers here are a little bit off I feel like there's more of a gap up here and that happens sometimes and the reason it happened to me this time is because if you notice I don't know if you can see on camera but there's a little bit of like gunk on this I actually put the adhesive on the wrong side I put the adhesive on this side first and I thought what am I gonna do and so I just flipped it over put adhesive on this side and went ahead and put it down and then I rubbed over a little bit just to take some of the stickiness off the snail adhesive is um, an adhesive that will rub off if you make a mistake you just can take it off it didn't come all the way off but I had put a lot on there so there's a little bit of gunk on here but when I put my photo on here um, it will be fine so I'll just need to be careful I'll probably take um, some of this that came off the back of my foam and I'll stick it on here so this doesn't get stuck to anything and then accidentally rip before I can get photos um, I was thinking that I would use this layout for our 4th of July photos that I have I thought that would be really good and then the other thing that I have is I do have this butterfly because I cut a couple of them from these dies and I was thinking that I just didn't maybe want to use it. I had thought about maybe using it here and maybe it would have been nice if I would have spaced this over and then used two of these butterflies like one on each side. But I didn't do that. I put this closer to the edge thinking, you know, I would put something else there, maybe a stamped sentiment or something. If I use this for the 4th of July, I was thinking about putting 4th of July in there. Then I thought about using it here, but I felt like that was weird. Um, I thought maybe using it right next to this butterfly. I don't know I had wanted to use three but now I'm feeling like it just kind of doesn't fit in and so I'm thinking about not using it so sometimes less is more so I have great spaces for journaling I have a great space for a title if I want to do a title and then like I said I think that I'll use this for our 4th of July photos that I took of us at our local small town parade. I think that would be great and I love the colors for that and it gives it a kind of a vintage look for 4th of July, but that's okay. So I hope that you guys enjoyed seeing this layout. I feel like it was kind of choppy, so I'm sorry if it felt a little bit disjointed and a little choppy. I'm sort of diving back into these simply layered pages again and I feel a little rusty putting them together and I felt a little off 
as my plan didn't work going, like I just had never done that before where I pieced it together and tried to use, you know, math <laughs> with my scrapbooking. And I feel like I'm just probably more comfortable going ahead and putting the strips. And even if I lose a little paper behind my layers, I feel like it works better for me. But there's nothing wrong in trying different ways of doing different things when you're creating. So let me know what you think of this layout and if you'll be trying it out. If you have any questions, please let me know. And as always, I appreciate it when you watch my videos. Subscribe to my channel. And if you need any Stampin' Up! supplies, the supplies are listed in the YouTube description below, on my website, and on Facebook if you're watching this on Facebook. So I hope you have a wonderful day. I'll be back next week to share with you some more amazing projects. Have a great weekend, you guys. so much for hanging out with me today and watching my videos. Here are two other of my most recent videos. I would love for you guys to subscribe to my channel and give this video a thumbs up if you liked it and I will catch you in my next video. I hope you all have a wonderful day.